Good morning, SEMA. This is Scott Caboose here with my friend Ryan Swanson from ProSpot. We're at the collision repair and refinish stage. Uh, SCRS and ICAR joined together to put this on for you. And we're going to talk about a brand new piece of equipment that was just really launched Tuesday, Monday. I, I happened to sneak in on Monday and got a little quick pe peek at it. Yep. And uh, I was really excited and uh, to be able to spend a little time with you today and hear more about it. So it's called the I-5S. What is it? What does it do? What, what market is it for? Take it over from here. Yeah, thanks, Scott. So, uh, yeah, we're glad to be here uh, on this stage, being able to talk about this new product. Uh, this has been a huge release and a long time coming for us at ProSpot. Uh, we pride ourselves on leading the way in spot welding technology and resistance welding for the collision repair industry. So mainly market this for the collision repair industry and the OEMs. Uh, but what we really wanted to do was take in some of the issues that the industry has, such as technician turnover and training lapses, to help build that into the product that they use every day so we can make their lives easier and also give the shops the peace of mind that their technicians are doing things the right way, documenting it the right way so that they can go to sleep at night that they're repairing cars correctly without the liability coming back at them. You make a great point there, Ryan. You could have the best piece of equipment in the world and it can be sitting in the corner collecting dust if your technicians don't know how to use it. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the biggest issues that I see across the industry as a collision technical trainer. And, you know, going into shops and seeing spot welders and MIG welders and, and all this fancy equipment that we're talking about sitting in the corner because they don't think it works properly, it, it hurts because we know what, what the OEMs need and what these requ cars require to fix them properly and, and make sure that these people are safe when they get back in those vehicles. So I, I absolutely agree with that. And that's where us, uh, as the product developers and our engineers came in with the I-5S to make sure that we helped with those situations. So we actually took on the I-5S and built in a Wi-Fi capable system. So in the past, it was always a USB stick. So if a new OEM came out with a new you know, weld cap that they wanted us to use, use in order for us to get those out to all of our customers we would have to give them a usb stick well who's going to tell them there's a usb stick available who's going to call them and let them know that hey gm just changed their their welding program and you need to update your welder to be up to date to properly fix the new gm vehicles so that's just one example that we're able to come in with the wi-fi capability and it's just like your iphone so you can wake up in the morning turn on the welder and you're going to go weld a, a bedside on a car and you can look at it and go oh my spot welder says it's out of date. What does that mean? I should update it so that you know that you're up to date and have the most recent welding algorithms uh, that you can in there. Yeah, and OEMs are doing that constantly. So we got new models coming out, we got new technologies coming out, and they may even go back and look at an old procedure and say, you know what, we, we've got a little different strategy and how we want this repaired going forward. Yep, absolutely. So we took that to heart and, and tried to make everything as easy as possible. And then going back to the point of the welder sitting in the corner, if the technician doesn't understand how to use that welder, he's not going to use it and go back to old habits and do things that maybe he shouldn't do on that vehicle. So what we did on this was put a help button in there. So uh, right now, if we can pull up the slide, it's going to be the third slide. Yep. So hopefully you guys can see a couple of those screens there on the I-5S. But Scott, if you see right there, right there, there's a training button. So mm -hmm. when the technician logs onto the welder, he's going to see a tab that says training. And inside of that training tab, there's not only uh, PDF documents, owner's manuals, but also videos. So live videos to telling you how to change welding arms, set welding programs, calibrate the welder, how to use manual mode, how to use the dent puller, how auto weld works. It's all in there in video so the technician can learn how to navigate through the buttons, navigate through the screen so that he's using the correct welding programs on the car. So we've really got a just-in-time training built into the machine. Yep. So we're going to watch those videos right on the screen of the machine. And you know maybe I didn't use this machine for a couple of weeks kind of clumsy on how I set it up then. Yep. I can watch a quick video and, oh yeah, now I remember how I did that and not fumble through it and maybe do it wrong. Yes, absolutely. So that's a great point. And then I think about, you know, the unfortunate part about our industry is is technician turnover. So there's a lot of different brands out there and, and a lot of good ones. So when, you know, a technician goes from one shop to the other and it's a different color welder, well, now they're able to press that training tab and understand how to change the arms and navigate it because 
most technicians understand that a resistant spot welder is going to squeeze together, make a beep, and make a weld. That's the ultimate goal. But how do we get those attachments on there? How do we use that auto mode? How do we manipulate manual mode when certain OEMs are asking for it? And that's what we tried to incorporate in those training videos. Excellent. So we had the i5 earlier. Yep. Now we've got an i5S. Yep. So what's the big difference? What, what, have, what have you improved? What have you changed? Is it a completely new machine or is it based on the old architecture? Yeah, it really is a whole new machine. So even though we, we tagged onto the i5 line and added on the S, the i5 was uh, ProSpot's first smart welder. So it was released in 2012, nice color screen, um, and it worked out really well. <coughs> Excuse me. So the i5 was a great smart welder to be introduced to the industry as one of the first trans guns out there. So now what we've done with the i5S is taken some of the things that we've learned and incorporated new technology. So not only the training that we've been talking about and the automatic updates, but also going to the gun design and making the gun lighter and more ergonomic. So the i5 gun, it was pretty heavy to carry around for technicians and you might end up throwing out your back if you uh, use it the wrong way. So the i5S is a little over 10 pounds lighter than the i5 was. We also added in a rotating collar around the gun so that you can easily manipulate the welder to any position that the technician needs effortlessly without you know, any whipping of the gun or, or heavy weight falling on them. So I'll be honest with you, I used the original i5 to put a couple of roof skins on. Yeah. Uh, you need some pretty broad shoulders to do that with that gun. Yep, absolutely. And that was the first thing I was looking at when I saw it over in your booth is, man, this gun's lighter. It's a lot more nimble. Yeah. Easier to use. Uh, you mentioned something, too. It, it's your trans gun unit. Yes. What does that mean to the technician? Yeah, so a trans gun basically means that the power is coming from inside of the gun. So in our industry, we mainly see two different kinds of welders, one of them being a cable style welder where you have a short cable from the welder to the gun, but they're big, big cables. Then you have the other side, which is the trans gun or a transformer gun, which means the transformer, the power maker, is located inside of the gun itself. That's why transformer welders typically have a little bit more weight to the gun because the power is coming straight from there. But what that does is gives the technician in the shop much more consistent delivery of that power because it's not traveling through a long distance of weld cables in order to meet that current. So you get a much cleaner weld. Okay, excellent. So as far as consumables, things like that. Are they carried over from the old style guns? Can we interchange tips? things like that or do yeah, we have a whole new line? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, with the uh, Pro Spot line, we really have two different style spot welders. One is the I4 line or the I4S, which is a 4RW taper cap. And then we also have the I5 and I5S line, which is the 5RW taper cap. So we have a variety of caps for each one of those, depending upon which model that you have. But for the I5S, it would be the same exact consumables as the I5 was originally if they were already using that. Uh, but you brought up a great point there on the cap selection. So um, um, you know, that's something else that these guys really need to be thinking about out there using these spot welders and making sure that those caps are in good shape, they're cleaning the caps, and they're paying attention to the way that those are. So uh, just to give you all out there that are listening uh, an idea, the difference between a flat cap, which is more has a bigger surface area than more of a cone-shaped cap, is 30% difference in weld power. So the problem is if the technician doesn't have the right setting on the welder and he welds it on the smaller cap when he actually has a big cap on there, it might weld, but is it welding properly and giving him the, the info that he needs? Well, he's going to get a different weld for sure than yeah. what the OEM is expecting. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if we can go back to that slide one more time, and we're going to take a look at that second screen. <clears throat> so that second screen there, you guys can see, has a whole bunch of information on it. So what we do is this is a live active weld log. So every single time the technician makes a weld, it's going to document all 80 working points or data points that you can see right there on the screen. So we're going to know who logged into the welder. We're going to know what time of day they made that weld. We're going to know if they were in auto mode or manual mode. So if they're working on a Honda, for example, that may require a manual weld setting, we're going to be able to look at the weld log and see if that technician actually perform the manual weld as the procedure called out. We can also see what cap selection was on here and we can also tell what their power is like so we can see if there's an issue coming from the building power that may not be allowing the welder to do what it's trying to do so that once again you can make sure that that liability is taken off and you can do as much as you can right. So this would be something that I'd want to print out and probably put in the file. Yes. And say hey when, when technician A came out here and welded on this vehicle Here's the weld parameters of every weld he did on that car. Yep. They all met the specifications. 
I put that in the file. If anybody ever brings that into question down the road, I've got good documentation, yes. which is something that not a lot of welders out there are capable of. Yes, absolutely, and that's a great point. So with that Wi-Fi capability that we were talking about, that gives the technician the ability to push a single button on the welder and email this data point or all these data entries for every weld that was done on that card like you just talked about, and it's easy. So some welders, like you said, are capable, some maybe not, but most of them on the market, it's a USB stick. So to have a technician plug in a USB stick, download, it, give it to the front office, have them plug it into the computer and put it into the, the file, that's a lot bigger ask than, hey, as soon as you're done, you're connected to Wi-Fi, you need to click email, your estimator's email's already in there, and now, boom, it's right there with the writer, production manager, manager, and drag and slide an Excel sheet straight into the file for that documentation. So if something happens or a post-repair inspection happens, they have everything that they can to be able to document and prove what they did at that time. Excellent. Now, does that give you any information about any adhesives or uh, anything of that inside the joint? Is that going to give me feedback on things like that? So the welder is capable uh, in the automotive technology of, of being able to weld through any of those materials. Um, one thing that's very unique on the i5S that uh, I'm glad you brought that up is it is a new patented adaptive auto weld technology. So basically what we did, that's a fancy way for saying we changed the way the auto weld works. So on previous auto mode welders, it is on a timer. So it's going to sense that material thickness, it's going to sense the resistance, it's going to apply a smaller amount of preheat current to burn through those E-codes, the weld through primer, the adhesives, whatever the OEM is calling for to be in between. And then after that timer runs out and it has its thickness, it's going to hit it with the main current. So sometimes you get sparks and things that fly because maybe not all the adhesive was burned away or not all the E-coat was burned away. Yep. So the I-5S actually delivers that weld power in a completely different different way unlike any welder on the market so it is so smart on the insides of this processor that and if I had my engineer here he would tell me but the <laughs> difference between the i5 and the i5s is like billions of data points that it's reading in a second I mean it's it's just crazy the technology that's changed over the last couple years so well, it's a 10-year newer welder yeah yeah I exactly mean, and it's a computer I mean it's yeah. it's basically a computer so what it's capable of thinking of and documenting is is just I mean it's it's almost unimaginable but when it makes that weld now instead of coming on a timer and just after two seconds let's say whether the adhesive's gone or not and then you get those sparks this is actually sensing all the way up the ladder sensing the energy of the weld so it's sensing the energy and then when that energy drops basically a voltage drop because now the e-code's gone and you have connectivity then it's going to hit it with the main weld so you have a smooth delivery of power every time without having a fireworks show and having to squint your eyes when you look sure. at it and that's important i mean i've been in shops where like well if it doesn't spark you did it wrong like, <laughs> I don't believe that's the way the manufacturer intended it. Yeah, not necessarily. Now, <laughs> sparks are going to happen from time to time. Sure. You're removing panels, putting them on, and, you know, maybe a tip's not perfectly aligned. And, and sparks are going to happen sometimes. But absolutely, we don't want to have big blowout welds. We don't want to be blowing out the material and hurt the technician and have, you know, a fireworks show across the shop. So anything that we can do to help avoid that, whether it's the welder technology or the prep from the technician, we definitely want to avoid that. Excellent. What else we got here? Um, so you'll also notice on the screen on the left hand side, we pull that up one more time. So I talked about the training tab, but one thing I didn't mention that this welder also does is each individual screen that you go on is going to have a question mark. So hopefully they can see that little question mark with the help button. What's unique about that help button is when you click on it, it's only going to tell you about the info that you're looking at on the screen. Okay. So if a technician comes up to the welder and he knows it's an auto welder, but maybe the last welder he used wasn't an auto mode welder. So he doesn't watch the training videos, he just clicks on auto and goes, oh, it's an auto welder, I'm going to weld. Clicks on auto and goes, oh, wait, it says calibrate, how do I calibrate it? What's, what's this millimeter thickness? What's this shiny little green scale? Well, you can click on that help button and it's only going to tell you what you're looking at on that auto mode screen. So it's not going to tell you about manual mode or dent polling or software updates. It's going to say, hey, this is how you calibrate it. This is what your measurement thickness means. This is what that shiny, you know, resistance scale means. And this is how it all pulls together to make an auto weld I'm happen. I'm not having to search through a whole library no. to find what I really need. Yeah, absolutely. That's and an then talking about OEMs, tradition. you know, like Subaru and Honda, right? Wanting manual welds. So when you go to the manual weld screen and you're trying to figure out, oh, 
Honda's asking me to do something specific. How do I get this to happen on my welder? Well, the i5S has it all pre-programmed in there, but let's say it wasn't programmed in there. Mm -hmm. You were able to hit that question mark, pull up the, the directions on how to set your current, your squeeze pressure, and your time. Nice. You're even able to look at how to set up a pre-weld. So you'll be in manual screen and be able to see everything that you need to do as a technician. Excellent. Well, we got to wrap up pretty quick here. But uh, I'm really excited about the new machine. Yeah. Great, great advancements over prior models that I've used and seen. Uh, wouldn't expect anything less from ProSpot. Yeah. Uh, you and Ron and the whole team over there are just amazing. Uh, I, are these available for shipment today? Are you We're, taking orders over in the booth? We are taking orders, but we are going to be releasing this in the spring. So okay. it will be a couple months out then. before. Yeah, we're doing pre-orders right now, and it will be a couple months. But if anybody's here watching, wants to come check out the booth and play with the welder, put their hands on it, we are there. We have it live, and you can weld with it right now. Excellent. Hey, it's great getting back with you again, Ryan. Uh, nice seeing you. And uh, thanks for bringing this to our attention today. Yeah, thank you very much, right. Scott and ICAR, for putting this on. And, and once again, yeah, great to see you as well. It's, right. it's been a while, so thank you. Yep, sounds good. Take care. All right.